Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. It is the Savage Nation live from Madison Square Garden in New York City. Welcome to edition number two of the Savage Nation from my hometown, New York City. I couldn't wait to get into the 95 degree weather and 95 percent humidity. It's delightful, I got to tell you. Try to visit New York in the summer sometime because if you're not from New York, well, you'll love it anyway because the streets are filled I've never seen anything like it. Millions of tourists, wherever you turn, like lemmings, speaking every language on earth, from every race, from every corner of the earth. It's a beautiful city. It's great to be here. But most importantly, it's great to talk about the news of the day on the Savage Nation. And boy, do we have news of the day. Of course, the number one story is Hillary Clinton. Did she wipe or not wipe? That is the question. Wait until you hear her weasel out of the question by Ed Henry of Fox News. It's an embarrassment. What she did would put anyone else in jail for violating the Espionage Act. You cannot believe what you're going to hear. And it gets better. Bill O'Reilly came out of the closet. We see him for what he is, a left-wing demagogue doing the bidding of his bosses at Fox News who are 100% in on amnesty for millions upon millions of illegals and all those who want to come in. And only Donald Trump can stop this insanity, the population overgrowth, maternity tourism, birthright citizenship. There's only one man speaking out against it. That's Donald Trump. Thank God I've been writing about it since 1994, but thank God that someone reads my books. Now, I can't say that uh, Donald Trump's reading my books, but I can't say he never read my books. After all, I'm not an unknown personality. Nevertheless, the issue is, can we afford to take in all the poor of the earth? Of course we can. Uh, cannot. Now, as I said to you yesterday, I am the son of an immigrant. If you remember, I was in Manhattan last summer. Do you remember? And I did a little speech. It was about an immigrant son returns, and I talked about how my grandfather landed in steerage on Ellis, uh, Ellis Island 100 years ago, and how my son was on his own boat on the Hudson River last year. Well, that's America. That's the American dream. That is the American dream, and I'm proud of it. And one man made me able to say I'm proud of the success that we've achieved in this family, and that's Donald Trump. He made success okay again, and he's already done us all a service in this country. And let me tell you something else. The poor like him better than the socialists who are telling that they want to tax more people. The poor want to be rich. Did you know that? Did you know that poor people want to be rich? Did you know that even Hispanics are voting in every poll for Donald Trump? Because they understand what socialism is. Most of them left horrible countries. They don't want this country to go downhill as it will under Hillary or that psychotic Bernie Sanders. Nevertheless, it's a great place to be. It's a great city to be in. So let's begin with some sound that you may not have heard, which is Donald Trump debating Bill O'Reilly, the man who came out of the closet as the left-wing demagogue he has always been. Listen now on the Savage Nation. I think you're wrong about the 14th Amendment and frankly the whole thing with anchor babies and the concept of anchor babies I don't think you're right about that I, I think can it's quote it, you want me to quote you the amendment if you're born here you're an American, period period, but there are many lawyers many lawyers are saying that's not the way it is in terms of this what happens is they're in Mexico they're going to have a baby they uh, move over here for that. a couple of days, they have the baby no, but Bill, they're saying it's not going to hold up in court, now it's going to have to be tested but they say it's not going to hold up in court regardless, when people are illegally in the country, they have to go, now the good ones and there are plenty of good ones, will work it so it's expedited, we can expedite it where they come back in, but they come Come back legally. Bill, we have a country. You need borders and you need I, law. Uh, I we said that no for law. decades. I've been saying that, but you are not going to be able to deport right. people. So O'Reilly has not said it for decades. Turn it off. Turn it off. No, he's trying to play it both ways. 
O'Reilly is a longtime left-wing operative who pretended to be a conservative. Now when the real issues come down, the rubber meets the road, so to speak, take a guess which side O'Reilly is on. He's on the side of Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, and the New World Order uh, a crowd. Let me explain something to you. I know the 14th Amendment intimately. I have it in my hand. The unconstitutionality of citizenship by birth to non-Americans is a fact of life. Let me read it to you. And I'm reading it to you from the gentleman, Senator Howard of Michigan, who actually wrote the amendment in the Senate in 1866. Mr. O'Reilly, did you know it was written in 1866, right after the Civil War? And do you know why the 14th Amendment was written? To make sure that the freed slaves were accepted as American citizens. It was never intended to admit the world, nor was it intended to permit birthright citizenship, nor birth tourism. I'll read it to you. This amendment, Mr. O'Reilly... Bill O'Reilly, pay attention. I know you have very big ears. This amendment, which I have offered, is simply declaratory of what I regard as the law of the land already, that every person born within the limits of the United States and subject to their jurisdiction is by virtue of natural law and national law a citizen of the United States. Listen, there's another sentence, Mr. O'Reilly. You have got to read on. You've got to read the whole thing, not a piece of it, because this is in the amendment. Quote, this is by the guy who wrote the amendment. This will not, of course, include persons born in the United States who are foreigners, aliens who belong to the families of ambassadors, or foreigners, aliens who belong to the families of ambassadors, or foreign ministers accredited by the, to the government of the United States, but will include every other class of persons. This, and he's writing now, I'm not repeating something in my own head. Here's the man who wrote it. He said, it settles the great question of citizenship and removes all doubt as to what persons are or are not the citizens of the United States, close quote. So it's clear that the framers of the 14th Amendment had absolutely no intention of freely giving away American citizenship to just anyone simply because they may have been born on American soil, something our courts have wrongfully assumed. But there is one sentence and one clause that does need discussion. As Mr. Trump said, it'll have to be determined in the courts. What exactly did, quote, subject to the jurisdiction thereof, that's the quote, mean to the framers of the 14th Amendment? We'll have an answer for that as well in the Savage Nation. Senator Lyman Trumbull, chairman of the Judiciary Committee, author of the 13th Amendment, and, one, and the man who inserted this phrase said this, quote, the provision is that all persons born in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens. That means subject to the complete jurisdiction thereof. What do we mean by complete jurisdiction thereof? Not owing allegiance to anybody else. That is what it means. In plain English, only children born to American citizens can be considered citizens of the United States, since only an American citizen could enjoy the extent and quality of jurisdiction of an American citizen now. That settles the case, and I'll tell you something else. You want to hear what, the, what established law is? That's established law. It was never intended to permit the world to dump their babies on our shores and turn them into instant, instant citizens who can then bring in the mother, the father, the aunt the uncle, the cousins, and the grandparents. It, it, it is either a nation of borders, language, and culture, or it's nothing. It ceases to exist. If you remember your high school biology, it's very simple. You learned what a cell was, and you saw that a plant cell had defined cell walls. Remember? A thick cell wall. That was the extent of the cell of a plant. That cell wall permitted the good stuff to stay in and the bad stuff from coming in, by the way. An animal cell has a cell membrane. Same thing. Without a cell wall or a cell membrane, there is no cell. It dissolves. It oozes out into the greater body. If that's what you want for America, a nation that is dissolved in front of your eyes, well, keep going along with Bill O'Reilly, Hillary Clinton, and Barack Obama. I'm Michael Savage. It's 14 minutes after the hour. The phone number here is 855-407-282. 855-400-SAVAGE. Again, live from Manhattan, New York City, the son of an immigrant talking about immigration, the biggest issue of the day. In fact, it is the only issue in this campaign that has really caught on, other than one other, and that is this, Hillary Clinton. Did she wipe or didn't she wipe? That is the question. Well, she was stopped by Ed Henry of Fox News after giving a little stump speech in a hot gymnasium yesterday. And here is what went on in clip number two on the Savage Nation. Right, charge of it. You were the 
traditional charge. Did you like the service? What, like with a cloth or something? No. Well, no. I don't. I know you want to make a point, and I can just repeat what I have said. In order to in order to be as cooperative as possible, we have turned over the server. They can do whatever they want to with the server to figure out what's there or what's not there. That's for the you know people investigating it to try to figure out. But we turned over everything that was work related, every single thing. Personal stuff, we did not. I had no obligation to do so and did not. All right, thank thank you all. Right. Thank you all very much. Is the that this issue isn't going to go away for the remainder of your campaign? Nobody talks to me about it other than you guys. Nobody talks to me about it other than you guys. Let me tell you something. There are people in prison right now who did less than what Hillary Clinton did. Did you know that? There are government officials from previous administrations who are in prison for doing less than what she did, and yet this imperious lady shrugged off the suggestion that she wiped her server clean with the snarky response, what, with a cloth or something? Let me tell you something. There's more to this than meets the eye. What is it that she wiped, and why did she wipe it? What is she hiding? What did she transmit? We'll find out eventually. This is a drip, 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 and it's getting bigger, not smaller. And let me tell you something. There's a thing called Chinese water torture. Do you know what it is? I learned about it as a child from my father. I said, Dad, what's Chinese water torture? He said they would put you in a place and fix your head in a certain position, and they would just drop one drop of water on your head at a time. I said, that doesn't hurt, Dad. He said, yes, in the beginning, that one drop, you hardly feel it because it's only a drop of water. But as the drops keep coming at you slowly but surely, eventually that single drop after a thousand drops starts to feel like a sledgehammer on your head. That's called the slow drip. 855-400-7282. This is the worst, the worst, worst buck passing I have ever seen since Hillary's husband, Bill Clinton, said that there's more than one way to define the word is and said, I did not have sex with that woman. Well, she could just say the same thing. I did not wipe it clean with a cloth or something. She was quite cocky. It doesn't make her look presidential at all. She looks like what she is, a Democrat socialist operative. And let me tell you something else. This is not going to play out very well for her. This is the Savage Nation. We get to chime in on these topics. The phone number here is 855-400-7282. I'll be right back to take your calls. Live from New York City on WABC's studios, Michael Savage returns. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation, electrified to be in the hot streets of New York City and see uh, the teeming masses of the world of which I am one, it's easy to forget when you're in the media that you're really one of the masses, you know that. We all think we're somehow in a separate world. But when you walk down into the sweaty streets and your shirt sticks to your skin and you get jostled on the streets, you realize we're all one and the same. We're all brothers under the skin. And that's why we're talking about an issue so important as a nation. Either a nation exists or it doesn't exist. Either we are a nation defined by a border, by a common language, and by a common culture, or we cease to be a nation. And as you well know, there has been a movement to erase our nationhood. It didn't start with Obama, but it's liable to end with Obama. And that's why this is such a critical issue. You know, if you've listened to my show, that I defined America as a nation defined by borders, language, and culture. But not just America. Can you name one nation on earth? Name one that is not defined by its borders, its language, and its culture. Say Finland. Finland has borders. Finland has a, a national language called Finnish. And it has a common culture. The founding fathers, the flag, the history, the wars they fought. That's culture. That's who we are. And now you have a crazy man in the White House, a lunatic, an enemy worse than the Soviet Union was in terms of the actual damage he's doing. Oh, he's on vacation right now in Martha's Vineyard with the billionaires and millionaires that he reviles every day. Isn't it wonderful? He reviles the rich and parties with the richer. Isn't that funny? I don't see him getting down with the homeless in lower Manhattan, but we know what politician means. It means double talking phony. That's an old story. 
But rarely have we had a double-talking phony who also put a knife, a knife to the neck of Lady Liberty. And that's what this battle is about for 2016. Will someone please stand up and defend Lady, Lady Liberty? Or are we going to have the same group of internationalists stepping on her heart and choking the windpipe? I don't know. And that's why we're talking about anchor babies. Whether you are for open borders or for a controlled immigration is the question. How can anyone listening to this program who looks around the streets of America and recognizes that about 98 million adults are not working, how can you honestly look in the mirror and say, yes, open the borders to all of the world? What country will be left? Where will the money come from for all of the social services that they have gotten used to and they hear about in their third world hell holes? They come to this country which you left-wingers hate? Why are they running here? Because it's such a hateful country? What are they coming from the garbage cans of the world for? Because it's such a hateful, racist nation, you idiots, you. They're coming here because it's a land of opportunity for those who want to work and a golden trumpet for those who don't want to work. They can sit around and collect welfare, uh, food stamps, free legal, free medical, you name it. I was a, a social worker in Manhattan, by the way. Let me remind you about that one day. Maybe you ought to tell that story on the Savage Nation. I was a young, idealistic, left-wing kid who came out of college. I didn't know any better. I took a job as a New York social worker. Did you know that? Yeah, I'm the only one in the media, in the American media, make a note of it, who is, number one, the son of an immigrant, and number two, I, I actually was a social worker, meaning a welfare worker. I worked for the New York Department of Welfare. That's what it was called in those days. They changed it from Department of Welfare to something like social services. Oh, we owe them a living. Social services. Yes, sir. How can I serve you? No, we call it the Department of Welfare. And when I tell you what I experienced as a young idealistic graduate of Queens College, your hair will stand up and you'll find out why I became a conservative pretty soon after that. Yeah, the welfare recipients were living better than I was as a college graduate and a native-born American citizen. Wake up before you wind up in no country. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. You were in charge of it. You were the official in charge. Did you like the service? What, like with a cloth or something? No. Well, no. I don't. I know you want to make a point, and I can right, just That's repeat enough already. We, we already had eight years of Hillary Clinton. Well, like with a cloth? Like with a cloth? Who does she think she is talking to? Are the American people that stupid that they don't know who the Clintons are? We didn't have eight years of one crime after another committed on the American landscape. Well, here she is. She wiped the server. Now, you know, there's an interesting question here. It is her own inspector general's department in the State Department that's pursuing this. It means that the dam has broken between Hillary Clinton and her absolutely fanatical control over everyone. The inspector general of the State Department is saying, hey, there's a problem here. And we want to find out what was on those. What was on there? What was she hiding? Does anyone listening to this show think that this is a minor story? Do you actually buy the Democrat line that this is nothing? Do you want to live in a country where, let's say, the Republicans win the next election? Do you want someone in the federal government to expand, have 60,000 emails that disappear and not know what was on them? Is that the kind of country you think you want to live in? Oh, of course, you're going to answer. It's not a big deal. It's only Republicans doing it because you are prejudiced. Do you know what prejudice means? You know where the word prejudice comes from? To prejudge. And you've prejudged that anyone who attacks Hillary Clinton, even if she committed a crime, is not a good person. No, my friends, where there's smoke, there's fire. There were secure messages on that computer or the device she was using, and she sent them to somebody. What were on the, what were the messages? What was on it? We know that there were satellite images. Do you know what that means? The most top secret images that the government has are Defense Department, Department satellite images. Think about this. The Defense Department has high-flying satellites. They can photograph a cigarette pack on someone walking around, around the globe. Those images were sent 
to Hillary Clinton for some reason, and she sent them to someone for some reason. If you live in a democracy, we have a right to know what did she receive, when did she receive it, who did she send it to, and what did they do with that message, and what was it all about? Don't you think you want to know? We'll find out sure enough because they've already pulled in Anthony Weiner's wife, Huma Abedin. She's now being grilled. She's being grilled like a salmon over hot coals. One of them is going to break. One of these roasted smelts being slow cooked over hot fire is going to crack because if they don't, they'll go to jail for 25 years for God knows what, perjury, espionage, God knows what they can get on. You know that there are people right now in prison for having done less? The other issue is Trump standing up for America's immigration laws and O'Reilly really coming out nakedly as the left-wing demagogue actor he has always been. It's a shock to me that Fox News, which frankly is all we have left, has moved so far to the left, especially on immigration. There are some very good people at Fox News, but there are some not very good people at Fox News, and O'Reilly happens to be one of them. I have called O'Reilly the leprechaun for many years, which is why I've been banned from Fox News. He's their big star. At least he was until Martha Washington came along. And now, of course, the leprechaun has been trumped by Martha Washington. But now he's trumped himself. He attacks Trump on an issue that is clearly a dividing line between conservative and liberal. Did you hear that interchange? We'll play it again for you later. Again, let me just repeat. Let's just calm down. Every nation on the earth is defined by borders, language, and culture. That is how Michael Savage, in 1994, when I formed the Paul Revere Society, I was asked to define what is a nation. How do you define a nation? You know that no one had clearly defined a nation until I did? And I said, well, I think it's borders, language, and culture. Let me tell you something. If anyone has defined a nation better than that, let me know who it is. A nation is defined by its borders, language, and culture. I defined it in 1994. My next book, my last book, my biggest book, my blockbuster, the only book you'll ever need on the subject of government in your lifetime is Government Zero. It's not even for sale except on Amazon. But listen to the subtitle. No borders, no language, no culture. From best-selling author of Stop the Coming Civil War, Michael Savage reveals the massive dangers currently leading to the demise of our nation. Oh, you think you've heard it all before? Savage sounds the alarm about how progressives and radical Islamists are working together towards similar goals to destroy Western civilization and remake it in their own respective images. These two dark forces are transforming our once free republic into a socialist third world dictatorship ruled by government zero, absolute government and zero representation. Combining in-depth analysis and biting commentary, Michael Savage cuts through mainstream media propaganda to reveal an all-out attack on our borders, language, and culture by progressive and Islamist travelers who have hijacked public policy from national defense to immigration to public education. There is only one thing that can stop this terrifying agenda. Michael Savage has a plan. Get the inside story before it's too late. I actually have chills up my spine as I read a definition of my own last nonfiction book. Government Zero on Amazon now. It won't be out until October. But let me tell you something. People are really wanting to read that book. And I want to tell you something else. I've been doing this for 21 years. I'm not going to be doing it forever. And I want this book, Government Zero, to be my swan song. I want to say bye-bye. And I want to disappear from the airwaves and from the written word in a couple of years. That's going to be the end of it. I'm not going to do this forever. And I want you to understand that you've got to carry the ball for me. You've got to pick it up, and you've got to carry the baton. Now, let's go back to the issues of the day. Trump is right. O'Reilly is a left-wing demagogue, 100% for amnesty, as is his boss, Murdoch. I happen to know from the inside, it leaks. Murdoch is a one-worlder. Murdoch is a new world order. The Fox News people have been told, these are your marching orders, you're for amnesty, and you hate Trump. You turn on Fox News, every minute it's an attack on Trump. They become like CNN and MSNBC, where it's like a joke. Here, I'll pick up the New York Times. Front page of today's New York Times. Little story. Trump paints GOP in corner on immigration. I don't think he's painted him in a corner. 
I think he's defined the issue of the day. He hasn't painted anyone in a corner. It's the other cowards who are in a corner, not him. He's clearly out there. You want to tell you something else about Trump that you don't know, that I have defined? I said it to somebody on the visit here. I don't know who. I said Trump is surprising he doesn't get angry. They push him pretty hard. They press his buttons. O'Reilly tried to paint them into being a demagogue monster who wanted to deport little poor foreign children. He didn't freak. He didn't get angry. I'll say it again. Donald Trump is very Reagan-esque. I said it first. He's sort of the Ronald Reagan of our time. He's affable. He's likable. He doesn't get hateful. He says it like it is without getting mad. I couldn't do it. That's why I'm not in politics. It's why I'm on the radio. I blow up too easily. I'd make a terrible politician, but I make for a very good uh, talk show, <laughs> don't I? where emotion counts. So let's go to some of the callers on the Savage Nation. Let's uh, see the topics. I don't know who the best caller is. I guess it's uh, Line 5, Ara on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Ara, go ahead, please. Yes, uh, it took me 25 years to figure out what the right wing is talking about. I was born in Syria. I'm a Christian Armenian. And uh, and I just want to thank you for uh, pushing this message. And uh, it, it, took, it takes a long time for immigrants to assimilate. And one of the reasons why the Roman Empire fell is because they took in too many nationalities too fast. And nobody wanted to. That is correct, sir. You have read your history. Rome was broken in two when the barbarians invaded and then peopled or populated the ancient Roman Empire with, let us say, foreigners. Let's just put it at that. And then there was no Rome anymore. The only thing left of Rome, uh, as is said in The Sopranos, uh, is Mulberry Street in Little Italy. I'm joking. Thank you for calling the Savage Nation. I love that scene <laughs> in The Sopranos. No, the Romans are left, but Rome is gone, obviously. The uh, kingdom, of, the nation of Rome, or shall I say the empire of Rome, because that's more correct. WBAP in Dallas, Line 8, you're up on the Savage Nation. Fire away. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. The uh, Hispanic culture has been building walls for centuries. There's a wall around Tulum. There is walled enclaves all over the city of Mexico City. And them walls were not to keep Americans out, but to keep the people that are coming across our border out of their neighborhoods. Now, let, let me tell you how Mexico treats immigrants, because I know some wonderful Guatemalan people. I know wonderful El Salvadorans, and they've told me horror stories that deserve repeating right here on the Savage Nation. I know people from Guatemala who crossed into Mexico... They were beaten almost to death by the Mexican federales and forced to pay bribes to survive. Did you know that? The girls are raped. Did you know that? Ask people from El Salvador who fled communism. By the way, that's an interesting story itself. Fled communism ha, in El Salvador under the wonderful leadership of El Salvador. They come here and they tell you horror stories about how Mexico treats them if they land in Mexico. Mexico is very, very strict on letting immigrants in. And do you know why? Because they can't afford them. So who are they sending to this country? The best and the brightest? I want to ask you a simple question. Is Mexico sending us the best and the brightest? No. But you say, look, Savage, come on, be real. Your grandfather came here as an immigrant. He was poor. He was uneducated. Yes, that is true. But there was no welfare net waiting for him. There was no immediate social service net waiting for my grandfather. It was do or die. So he had to go to work. I got to tell you another little story. My father, I told the young man who's traveling with me, he was a 27 year old young man. I, we saw a horse go by, the Central Park carriage horses. You've seen them with the carriages, and you hear them clip clopping down the streets on the hot day, and you feel bad for the horse. I said, Did you know that my father, at age nine or 10, drove a horse drawn wagon in the streets of New York delivering laundry? He said, What? I said, There were no child labor laws then. My father needed to work, or they wouldn't have eaten. Did you know that? He drove a laundry wagon with a horse at age 9 or 10, and the horse got away and ran and ran and ran and pulled him off the wagon. He told me about it, and a spike went right through his leg. He showed me the scar on his leg. Now, I didn't take that as a real story. Kids hear these stories. They don't know, you know, what does it really mean? Well, when you walk the hot streets of Manhattan and you see the horses, you can imagine your father as a little 9-year-old not watching Sesame Street and taking Ritalin, but driving a laundry wagon. That was the American way. 
So you're saying, well, you want to go back to that and have immigrant kids drive laundry wagons? You don't have to go to the extreme. That's called a reducto ad ad absurdum argument. You understand? If I were to say a thing like that, can you say, well, what do you want to do with all of the immigrants? Put them on laundry wagons and ride horses at nine? That's called reducto ad absurdum as an argument, meaning you take the exact opposite and you make an absurd point. I didn't say that, but we need a rational border policy. That's what that's all about. Now, I want to tell you something else about anchor babies. I told it to you yesterday, but it is worth repeating today. Canada, beautiful nation, wonderful people. They were being flooded by Chinese who were coming in in the ninth month of pregnancy, delivering the baby in Canada who became instant citizens. Then mommy became a citizen. Daddy was born in from China. The grandparents. Canada got freaked out. And take a guess who stopped the anchor baby law in Canada. It was a Chinese Canadian who said we cannot afford to have all of China deliver their babies here. And they eliminated Anchor, they eliminated the anchor baby law. They eliminated maternity tourism. They eliminated it on the spot. And it was a Chinese Canadian. He was not doing it because he was a racist against Chinese. He was doing it because he was a rationalist who loved Canada. As am I, Michael Savage, rationalist who loves America. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Do you want a government zero or a government of the people, by the people, and for the people? And what kind of government officials do you want? Do you want one that functions around the law, gets around the law? Let me tell you something. What Hillary did, I don't think they're going to catch her. We all hope that eventually a powerful person gets caught. Because if you did this and you were a low-ranking State Department employee, you'd be in prison. There's no question about it. But don't hold your uh, breath. Remember Sandy Berger? He smuggled state secrets out of the National Library in his underwear. Sandy Berger, the lawyer. From Washington, D.C., the man who does deals with China to this day as a lobbyist for one of America's principal law firms, Sandy Berger smuggled secrets in his underwear. He didn't serve five minutes in jail. If you took a library book and got caught, you'd go to jail for three years. Okay? Okay, put the caller up, whatever the line was. Did you say it's line three? Gary from MAL in Washington. Gary, go ahead, please. Yeah, hey, Doc. You know, we keep hearing about what was found on Hillary's server, satellite imagery, top secret level stuff, and whatever. What a lot of people don't understand is that you just cannot sit at a top secret enclave uh, terminal and type out an email to Hillary at, you know, pantsuit.com or whatever. You had, That room is generally what is known as it's a skip. It's a secure compartmentalized information facility. It tends to be a room within a room that is uh, partially, most times, a Faraday cage, which prevents any for inseminations, for RF emanations from leaving that area. So bottom line is, is that somebody had to either type that stuff up and redact the fact that it was a uh, secret, uh, S-I-T-K, no foreign, whatever, and uh, or they had to put it on some sort of a removable media, which is not allowed in a skiff, and they had to remove it from this secure room, fingerprints, you know, the whole nine yards just to get in the room so that these people, people could get the information to Hillary. There was so many other laws broken other than the fact that she had... Wow. On her service. Wow. Gary, I never heard this before. Where, where, oh, were you a man who works in the, in the military? Uh, I have, and I still do, yes. What you just said on this national radio show, has this been expressed on other shows, or has it been printed in newspapers? I haven't heard it. I've been looking for it. I've been trying to get through to other shows and all that. I'm surprised actually I got through to you because I always get a busy signal. Gary, I got to ask you to stay on the line because what you just said has made news on this show. It should make news around the world. Guys, get Gary's number. We're going to open our number, well, the 4 o'clock hour on the East Coast with it. Gary, give us a nu- in a nutshell what you just said about the server. And uh, you're saying, let me see if I understand, what Hillary received from the Defense Department, how to go through a secure room. Is that basically what you said? Yeah, you cannot email from top-secret information from a top-secret enclave terminal or whatever because that is in a room that's generally known as a skiff. Okay, you can Google the term skiff and all that. It's not like that's classified or anything like that. 
but the stiff. All right, wait. So it goes from the Defense Department to a top secret room, and somebody had to remove it from that room to send it to her. Any any TS enclave, depending on how it got there, be it through a DOD. Unbelievable. This is like a John le Carré spy novel. There's more to this than meets the eye. I think we broke new ground on the Savage Nation because I'm not Bill O'Reilly. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Yes, it's like a spy story with Hillary Clinton as the villain slinking around National Security Headquarters. Will they catch the villain in the pantsuit before it's too late? Only James Bond can tell us on The Savage Nation. Now, it could be high theater and funny if it was not funny and if it was theater, but I got to tell you something. Radio is primarily an entertainment medium. Even talk radio, which can be very educational, is part of an entertainment empire. That's what radio originally was. But every once in a while, we break new ground. We make the news. It just happened on the Savage Nation. We had a caller from Washington, D.C., who will remain anonymous. I'm sure he is anonymous, who worked and still does work in military intelligence. And by the way, we have another caller, a young lady named Rebecca from Washington, who worked in intelligence. And you are going to learn that a lot more laws were broken by Hillary Clinton than are being talked about. At the end of the last hour, the caller, Gary, from MAL, told us, about skiff i never heard of skiff did you hear of skiff you didn't hear about it in any other show what is skiff sensitive compartmented information facility pronounced skiff in the united states military security and intelligence parlance it's an enclosed area within a building that is used to process sensitive compartmented information and keep it secretive so gary called and said for Hillary Clinton to have received these satellite images from the Defense Department, it had to first go through this room, this secret room. And it means what, Gary? Line three, Gary, pick it up from here. So the Defense Department sends this information to the secret facility. What happened next? Well, again, regardless of how the information gets there, okay, it's classified. It's TS. So it's in this room, which and, and you... you that it, it could have come from another skiff, from another location, however it gets there, okay? Bottom line is they're just very secure enclosed networks, period, okay? So, you know, but you can't, you cannot, just, there's inside of it, you can't sit to, next to uh, a TS terminal in one of these places and actually sit down and then go and do Google, okay? Because that does not exist in there, okay? It's According to my, my knowledge, access to skiffs, is normally limited to those with top secret clearance and this none cleared personnel and skiff units must be under constant oversight to prevent unauthorized access to classified material what happened next gary how did this person get it to hillary well again there's there's, there's no way that they can just email it from the secure terminal to again hillary at you know pantsuit.com wherever she's at you can't just go from that enclave to an unclassified or commercial network because they do not exist in the same reality at all. So it had to be either copied somehow, written, typed, or whatever, and then removed physically from this skiff to be put onto a non-commercial mean, or excuse me, a non-secure uh, means like a. So, uh, so Gary, in, in 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 amateur terms, we're listening in for the first time. Somebody had to copy it and send it to her from that room? Not from that room. It has to be removed from that room. It has to be removed from the TS Enclave because there is no commercial access points in these rooms, period. 
Well, you mean so somebody wrote it down and took it out of the room? Or they put it on a thumb drive or a CD, but those sorts of media are generally taboo and inside of... Somebody, somebody did a thumb drive or a JPEG in a top-secret room and took it to Hillary Clinton? It's, it's possible. That's the only other way. That's the only well, way I can do it. Gary, you have stopped my breath for a moment, and I thank you for calling the Savage Nation. This could be the most important breaking point in this whole story, but wait, it gets even better. Rebecca, on line six right now from WMAL again in the nation's capital. Rebecca, please come on to the Savage Nation and tell the people what you know. Thank you, sir. It is definitely an honor to be on your show. Uh, it sparked me to call thank you. hearing Gary. I was actually driving home uh, from my way from the Pentagon, and I've been working in the intelligence community, both as active duty military as well as a DOD contractor for 23 years now. And basically backing him wow. 100%. Everything that he has said is 100% accurate. I work even in an open classified, which is only secret, at, uh, from my main office. You have to check your cell phone. You can't even bring your cell phones in. You can't bring anything that's recordable in there. Now... Yeah, Re Rebecca. So it, wait. Let, let's let's back up. Hillary Clinton transmitted secretive, very top secret satellite data to somebody. We don't know to who. She said in a joke, "What did I use a cloth to wipe it?" How did she get that imagery? Who who did someone remove it from the room for her? Well, and, and that's what I can't understand because, like Gary was saying. You have unclassified, uh, your, your normal computers that everyone uses, you can Google, you can email. Then you have a secret level, which is the next enclave up. That in and of itself is not at all connected whatsoever to the unclassified network. It's a completely separate entity. I cannot email from Google to my secret account or from my secret to my, my Gmail account. I can't do that. Now let's take it, take it up one more step. Now we're getting to the TS and actually SVI level, which is the skips, which is your top secret level. Now at that point, that's even you know that's higher, more secure. Um, you have to have additional clearances to get in there. I've been you know I've had those clearances, and you can't even go between top secret and secret. It's not possible. And if it, they're talking geospatial information, which is what I have heard on the news, we're talking satellite imagery. That is TSSCI. I can tell you that right off the bat. I know that for a fact. And that is what? Rebecca, that is what? It, that is top secret. Typically, SCI level, which is an additional code on top of the top secret. And I in the, the So how would somebody have taken that that satellite imagery out of that secret room, the James Bond room, and gotten it to Hillary? What did they have to do to bring it out of there? See, that's what I can't comprehend because I, I was a cryptologist for crying out loud. I, I, you know, worked this, and the, the you are a, wait, you are a cryptologist in the Defense Department, Rebecca. I was a cryptologist in when I was active duty military for eight years, and then I flipped over. Now I'm basically DoD IT. I mean, I work Holy God. In computer systems. So the thing is, is that the USB ports that you typically would, you know, put your thumb drive in, or, or, as well as your your writable DVD drives, those are typically completely disabled on those systems. So, you know, forget about not even being able to bring it in there. They're typically disabled. There is usually one person who has the authority, um, and there's always TPI, two-person integrity, when you're dealing with SCIF. Even the safes have two different combos held by two different individuals so that no one person can access these things individually. So I, I'm, I'm... Let me ask you something. This top-secret facility has a skiff in it. It's a secure room. Is it underground? Where are these things? Typically, they're not always underground. Sometimes they are, but sometimes uh, they can be internal, though. You'll never see one with windows because, like Gary was saying, they're, they're specially protected so that the electronic emissions cannot escape. Mm. So that they oh, so, so spies, so in other words, foreign governments can't pick up the signal. Absolutely. So you'll, they'll typically be either underground in a basement or they'll be internal in a building where you can have this, this heavy-duty structural integrity to the building, to these rooms. This is unbelievable to me. Let me ask you, Rebecca, you work in intelligence. You're a former cryptologist. You see the Hillary story. What do you feel in your heart of hearts went on here? 
Who was she sending this to, and for what reason? Unfortunately, there is there is not one positive reason that I can find. There is not one. Everything has got to be. I, I I'm. <laughs> I can't come up with any any you know any good logical rational explanation for it because I'll tell you right now if I had even a basic um, oh. security incident where I left a piece of crypto out or I somehow had classified information in an unclassified space, not only would I automatically lose my job and my security clearances, but I would more than likely be brought up on charges as well. Right now, in in your business of this world that you live in, this top secret world. You live a very tense life because you are trust, trusted with the greatest secrets the government has. Irrespective, Republican or Democrat, we are still a sovereign nation and we have a lot of enemies who would like to see us go under. What the heck was she transferring and to whom? What in the world was she sending? What was this about? Okay, we understand it was satellite imagery about Benghazi. Isn't that what we've all heard in the news so far? That's what I believe. I believe there's something really deep okay. and dark under there. Oh, my God. Please, let's not let our minds get carried away. Do we know when this happened? Did it happen before the ambassador was killed by the mobs or after? We don't know. But it could have been going on the whole time. We just don't know. And with her having, you know, professionally wiped these servers numerous times, if they magnetize those drives, we'll never know from that piece that she turned over. If, if they did a, a professional... You know, situation where they magnetize with the same level that the DOD does it. Um, that's going to be hard for any forensics to recover. The only thing that I'm hoping is, is well, it's it's a catch twenty two. You you hope nobody had backups or copies because there was classified information. If that's true, but on the same <laughs> note, if there was, then that would be the one positive route we'd have to be able to track it down and actually find out exactly what happened. I'm not going to ask you whether you're a Republican or a Democrat because it doesn't matter to me. You're you're an individual who loves America, and that's why you work in the top secret field that you work in. What is the feeling, without giving away any information, amongst your coworkers about what this means for America and national security in general? Is there buzz going on in the intelligence community about what Hillary did? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We're and what are they? What are they? We're all what? Appalled. It's a, it's such a double standard because we know we're heavily scrutinized, and rightfully so, um, you know, with, with the background checks and constantly having to have to report anything in our, in our lives that could potentially um, be an issue for us. And we're, do you we're think that the FBI, um, do you think the FBI, Obama's FBI, Loretta Lynch's FBI, is actually going to get to the bottom of this? Unfortunately, I don't have, I don't have the faith that I wish I did. That, that will happen. Right. It's not an independent FBI. Loretta Lynch was handpicked, by the way, by Al Sharpton, if you can believe it. Al Sharpton, a man of this low caliber, lobbied to have Loretta Lynch, a U.S. attorney from New York City or New York area, made the attorney general, and Obama made her attorney general. Do we actually believe that a woman appointed by Barack Obama is going to blow the whistle on a Democrat? I don't, I don't feel that's even within the realm of possibility. Actually, the, there is one potential, I think, that, that it would happen. And that's if there's something going on in the administration or in the big scheme of things that, for whatever reason, they decided they don't want Hillary Clinton to be the nominee and this would be the easiest way to take her out. That's one. So there, so uh, so there could be, there could be collusion coming from the Obama camp to make certain Hillary is not nominated as president, and we won't know why. But there could be collusion, and that's why we're even hearing about this, right? Right, and that's pure speculation for me on my part. But unfortunately, I've become a little bit more cynical over. The well, thank you. Oh, cynical is good. When you live in a cynical time with a cynical president and a cynical government, I think cynicism is a healthy, <laughs> a healthy attitude. I thank you for listening to the Savage Nation on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Unfortunately, at this moment, we have to take a commercial break, at which point I will return to talk about two things, and really two things only. One is the spying scandal. I don't know what else to call it. The spying scandal that has enmeshed Hillary Clinton... And the story of ancient Rome, when the barbarians broke the empire into east and west, which is a little bit of history, 
that might educate us about what we're living through right now in the good old U.S. of A. I'll be right back. This is Michael Savage. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. What you are about to hear on the Savage Nation and what you have been hearing on the Savage Nation, I believe, is new information. We are going to put it up on michaelsavage.com tonight in listenable form as an MP3. We have anonymous security experts from the Defense Department, the CIA, and other places listening into this show and calling in with stories about what Hillary may have done that I've never read anywhere. I didn't see it anywhere. I didn't hear about it. I don't have a staff of 300. Instead, I have an audience of millions, which is the best staff in the world, millions of Americans. We have another one right now, Dave on WMAL again from Washington, D.C. Go ahead. What is it you want to tell the American people? Mr. Savage, good afternoon. Um, I just want to corroborate what, uh, what Rebecca and the other, other individual was saying. I've been in the intelligence community now for about 15 years, both in the U.S. military as well as several um, uh, three-letter agencies uh, within uh, Washington, D.C., to include uh, many of our NATO allies. And the only thing that I can think of, as what they were saying, there's no way to move information from an unclassified terminal to a classified terminal. You can go up, but you can't go down. So if this is classified information, the only way that I can think that she got it onto an unclassified system is printing it out and then scanning it on an unclassified scanner and then emailing it. Now, that would be... Oh, wait, you, 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 wait you, do you mean that you mean Hillary or her staff members did that? Perhaps one of her staff members uh, printed it out and removed the classification markings. But what's really funny is that all of us, you know, us government employees within the intelligence community, if we did anything like that, that, that would be right. a security violation. We would go to jail. We also, some of us, get polygraphed. And um, we're at- I, want, I want to ask you about, let, let's say, God, you did this. You did this, not for bad reasons, but you did it by accident. Of course you lose your job. What is the crime that you're charged with? The mishandling of classified information. Just mishandling of classified information is enough to land you in the slammer. Correct. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So even if she didn't mean to do anyone harm with it, she just wanted to transfer it, she already violated the law. She mishandled classified information. But you and I both know that the law is unequal. It does not apply to all. In fact, as we all know, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. This is the Savage Nation. Be here or be a dummy. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. From the Pink Panther to the Pink Pantsuit in one generation. Will the Pink Pantsuit be caught at last? It's the Savage Nation. We've got to lighten it up a little bit because this is really reaching a point of fright. When you see an individual who would be president, who is even accused of this, and has no defense other than, I wiped it with a cloth as a joke and she walks out of the questions. Do you really want to live in a country like this? Yeah, maybe you do. Maybe you already do. I don't know. But we've had people calling this show who worked for FBI, CIA, DIA. I can't even name the agencies because I don't know all the acronyms. But you know what I heard in the voices of these individuals? People who have given their lives to protect America's secrets. They love America. It's easy for us in conservative radio to bash government and say, oh, everyone who works for the government is this, everyone who works for government is that, they're all lazy, they all want a pension. Let's not overgeneralize. Most of them work because they love America, and they do it because they want to keep this country safe and great. And I don't know whether they're Democrat or Republican. I could care less. All I know is that we have someone who wants to be president who is less than presidential in what she did. There's no question in my mind that whether or not she's eventually found out and punished for it is irrelevant. What is relevant is that she's not qualified to be president based even on the suspicion that she did something wrong. Either we live in a law, a land of laws, or we live in a lawless land. It's that simple. Let me repeat that in case you missed it. 
Either we live in a land of laws that apply to all of us equally, or we live in a lawless land. You make the choice. I've already made that choice. I've been talking about it a long time. And we'll continue to talk about it on the Savage Nation. I want to go to my website for one minute before we get a few more intelligence personnel, all calling, by the way, out of Washington, D.C. This, <clears throat> this is the power of a national radio show. When it's heard on so many stations in drive time, and the pulse of the nation <clears throat> is being pounded like this, we're getting people who are saying, i got to call in, I, I've got to do my duty. But let's not miss the other stories. On my website, I'm not pushing the website, there are stories that are worth mentioning. Here's one on the top right. Black Lives Matter organizer and a winner of an Oprah Winfrey scholarship, a, a, a man who was allegedly a hate crime victim, has been revealed to be white. Can you believe this one? Yeah, oh, read the story. I, I know it's a right-wing conspiracy, but no, he was white. Here's another one. Trump border wall proposal sparks controversy, but barriers are popular worldwide. That didn't make it to the old York Times. Oh, one other story you may have missed. George Soros, the money trader, the fanatic who's made billions betting against currencies, the man who has put billions into green energy, the man who bashes coal, he just invested ooh, a lot of money in coal. After driving the price of coal almost to zero, he moved in and bought a billion dollars worth of coal stock. That's right. Soros warms up to coal as stock prices hit bottom. Did you hear that story? Well, you ought to look into it if you want to know what the word hypocrisy means. Billionaire George Soros warms up to coal as stock prices hit bottom. This is the left-wing lying fanatic investor who has demonized fossil fuels for years through his think tanks, through his political contributions, and now that he's driven big coal stocks into the dirt, he bought them up. He bought stock in two large coal companies, firms that his critics say George Soros himself help bring to their knees. Now, buying low is the hallmark of any shrewd investor. We all know that. <clears throat> but buying coal, doesn't that go against the political and environmental ideology that George Soros has long espoused? I think so. You see, he runs the Climate Policy Initiative think tank. But did you know that George Soros just snapped up one million shares of Peabody Energy? And half a million shares of Arch Coal, which now gives him significant controlling sh stakes in what's left of the United States coal industry. Hold on one minute. You're not going to believe what you're about to hear. Six years ago, Peabody Coal was trading under the symbol BTU. It was uh, at, a, at a price of $90 a share. But because Barack Obama, the puppet of Sh Soros, punished the coal industry with costly mandates and regulation... Peabody shares have fallen to around $1. By the way, neither George Soros nor his New York-based investment firm, Soros Fund Management, would comment on the coal play, citing a long-standing policy of not discussing investments, according to Fox News. That's America at its best. Now let's move on to the stories again. I don't know who the best caller is, but boy, this is amazing. We have the best callers I've ever seen. Guys, put up the best caller next from any station. Just tell me the line number. Go ahead. on this Line 8 on the Savage Nation. Ron on MAL again. Ron, tell your story about intelligence, please. Uh, skiffs, by the way, are not always, uh, uh, you know, man 24 hours a day. But in order to open up a skiff, you have what you call a two-man rule. You open it up, you got to sign the door open. You have to have it witnessed. You close it. You have to have two people to close it. When you're in there, you're supposed to be in there with two people. Uh, you open up a safe, you got to sign it open, you got to sign it closed, and, and a witness. Uh, there is a thing in there called a, a uh, secure telephone that you can communicate out with, but you have to have a special encrypted key to do that, and the other guy on the other end has also got to have that key. Uh, a, real, mm. a real issue here, too, though, with Hillary is Hillary had a higher clearance than I ever had, and I spent 50 years, basically, in the intel world. The, 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 we've been listening about TS. Wait, repeat that. Wait, wait, uh, sir. You were fifty years in the intelligence community. Five zero. Yes. Anyway. Oh wow. Okay. Well, well Ron, hold. I don't mean to cut you off. So you know more about this than you can tell us in a few words. 
What in the world do you think she was doing is the real picture? What was Hillary getting and who was she sending it to in your in your gut? If you were called before, let's say your boss, wherever you worked, and they said, look, someone took this out and they'd say to you, Ron, what do you think she took and who, who would she have sent that to? I'm sure they run sessions like this inside these agencies. What would your answer be? Well, I really, I really don't know uh, because I don't know exactly all of her connections. But an important thing that no one's spoken to yet is the fact that she had higher clearance than I did. I, I had a TSSCI and then what I'll call tickets. Okay, ticket is even a more refined uh, uh, restriction on who can have that data. And she had, I am sure, TSSCI and, uh, and special clearance just for state. And other agencies have special clearances, too. In many cases, you go to NSA, you must be polygraphed. I was never polygraphed. The issue is, is those tickets are also important because those are even more restrictive on, on classified information than just TSSCI. I mean, TSSCI is very, very restrictive. But when you add tickets to it, you might have somebody in the State Department, the whole State Department, that only four people know about. I mean, that's... All right, but look, Ron, you have 50 years in intelligence. I have zero years in intelligence. All I have is, is, is the ability to do inductive or deductive reasoning. I am trying to figure out what she's hiding. What in the world could she possibly have? We hear that it's satellite if, uh, imagery. So let's, let's play 20 questions. What does that mean? Maps of what? Well, there, there's, uh, there's an organization called NGA, and there's also an in, uh, organization called NRO. And those agencies uh, can do satellite reconnaissance for other uh, these uh, trigraph agencies. And some of that stuff is used for targeting. I can tell you that right now. I, I worked on a program where we were using that kind of stuff to target uh, various places around the world. And you mean target them with? You mean target them for drone strikes? Is that what you mean by target them? Excuse me, tactical strikes. Tactical strikes. Yeah. All right. So that's one possibility. One possibility they were trying to hit somebody. Is that is that a possibility? Of course it is. Of course it is. Wow. Well, that's chilling unto itself. We came. We saw. He died. <laughs> The famous Hillary Clinton soundbite about Muhammad Gaddafi. We came, we saw he died with a big laugh. Well, this wouldn't be the first time that uh, something along the, those lines was uh, enacted. Ron, at the end of the day, do you really think this is going to come to light? I pray to God that it does. Because you know what I look at when I see all this and what she's getting away with? I think of all those years I spent with a security clearance trying to protect that information, and this woman walks free, you know what I say? All you people out there that have a clearance, don't even worry about getting in trouble. Hillary ain't getting in trouble. You should just be able to use her as an example. And, and I, I, I think it's a... Well, what's interesting is you're saying, some, you're saying something interesting. You're saying if she skips this, if they let her off on this, it means that security clearances mean very little. Suddenly, anybody could use this as a precedent, saying, look, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Uh, uh, and by the way, Hillary Clinton did it. Nothing happened to her. Any lawyer could get them off from now on, right? I, I would. A slick. A slick. Uh, well, yes. Any, any good defense attorney would use the Hillary defense after this. So it would make, it would make mush out of our intelligence communities. But, you know, Snowden's going to come back to the state someday. He's going to lawyer up, and some slick lawyers are going to get that dude off, and that dude instead should be hung. Okay? Because I know the crap. That well, wait. What Snowden? By the way, what Snowden did was it on the level of what Hillary did? Uh, maybe even more. More here. here. Oh, man, I got to watch. Uh, the real thing. Okay, let's not put... Hold it, hold it, my friend. I don't want, you know, I know you're in a very tight-knit community. Voices are easily recognized. I don't want to put you in any jeopardy with uh, your colleagues or former colleagues. I don't want to put you on the spot and have you have a, a bad night tonight because I, I tend to, you know, draw people out as though we're just having a conversation. But the, the stakes are very high in this poker game, and I don't want to hurt anybody with this conversation, Hillary included. Let's assume she's innocent, by the way, until proven guilty. But what is she innocent of? That's the question. 
If she's innocent, what is she innocent of? Why did she erase it is the question. Isn't that really the question, Bill? She is not innocent. She is guilty. Guilty, guilty, guilty. She just hadn't been indicted and tried. And All right. Of- she hasn't been indicted. Go on. Make your last point, please. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I, no, no, all please. The professionals out here should be screaming and shouting and, and uh, explaining exactly what she has done and could uh, possibly compromise in our nation and our security organizations and the, and the data that she handled. It's just, it's, it, it, it makes my heart pound to think that someone could get away with this. And, and I protected it for all that. But what did, you, what did you feel when you saw the interchange between Hillary Clinton and Ed Henry of Fox News, where she just treats it in a flippant manner, like when they say, did you wipe it? And she says, what, with a cloth? How did you feel at that moment? You know what? After spending the years I did, but she spent four years in there. And, and I can tell you right now, just because you have classified it, just because you have a piece of information that has no classification on it, that doesn't mean it's not classified. Okay. I can send you a, an email right now that has top secret information on it, and I could actually send that to you by an email because I know some stuff, and I can send that to you and not have TSSCI written on it, and you can't turn around and say, "Well, geez, it didn't have any classifications; it must be, it must not be classified." But yet, if you know the content of that data, you know that I shouldn't have sent it to you. Okay, if you work in the so you, in other words, just by receiving it. She should have recognized it was top secret. Of course. Of course. But she said she didn't know it was secret because it didn't say it. Well, then... Uh, then therefore, then, uh, how was she qualified to be Secretary of State then? And moreover, how was she ever going to be qualified to be the President of the United States of America? I guess after Barack Obama, there are no standards. Thanks for the call, my friend. Good luck. It's 47 minutes after the hour. The time is racing away. i got to tell you something. You know, I'm doing this show from Madison Square Garden, where ABC Studios are located in Manhattan. I'm looking down on the millions of people hustling into Penn Station to go home on a hot, muggy day. And even though I'm in an air-conditioned studio, I am sweating from head to toe by what I've learned tonight on the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere, I'll be right back. We came, we saw, (laughs) he died. (laughs) Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Michael Savage live from WABC Studios at Top Madison Square Garden here in Manhattan. And, of course, the, the one topic that people want to talk about is Hillary Clinton's missing emails. And did she wipe or not wipe? Also, Donald Trump being attacked uh, by Bill O'Reilly. I'm not shocked by that. Bill O'Reilly's always been a quizzling and, and who I've called a leprechaun, not so fondly, because I think he is a leprechaun. And he did an interview that appeared in The Hollywood Reporter that you can link to on, on uh, The Drudge Report. And they asked Donald Trump, what media do you consume? And I'm, I'm jealous. He doesn't say The Michael Savage Show. He says, Matt Drudge is an amazing guy, politically one of the legends. He's been so fair to me, he doesn't want anything for himself. And that's a good statement. And it's true, we all read the Drudge Report. Liberals and conservatives alike all go to the Drudge Report. And I'm not just promoting it. I have no stake in it one way or the other. In fact, the few times I've ever talked to Matt, I say, hey, Matt, what's up with you? How come you don't ever promote me? Why do you only promote your friends? (laughs) So it's not like I'm looking to get something. Just everybody reads it for, for good reason. And this issue of the wiping, it's a big deal. Did she wipe or not wipe? That is the question. Now, I missed a story today that's heartbreaking. ISIS beheads 82-year-old archaeologist in Palmyra. They cut his head off. He was the Syrian state antiquities chief, Mamoun Abdul Karim. I'm sorry, that's not the name of the man who had his head cut off. Assad, Khalid Assad had been beheaded earlier in the day, 82 years old, and then the vermin, the throwbacks, the Hitlers in headscarves, the Islamo-fascists, hung his headless body from a column in the town's main square. That's what ISIS is. They are the worst scourge the planet has seen since Adolf Hitler hit the earth. Do you know that? I don't know if you know this, but I talked about Palmyra that had Roman-era runes. I talked about it two months ago. I talked to you about the columns, the special pink columns. Do you remember that? Uh, It's an obscure point. 
But I was on to what Palmyra was to the world, the world's history, the world's archaeology. How can this world sit idly by while they're doing these things to people and the world's history and not wipe them off the planet? How can this military, under the commander-in-chief who is licking an ice cream cone in Martha's Vineyard, sit idly by? They just cut off an 82-year-old man's head. Shame on you, Barack Obama. Shame on you. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is the Savage Nation, electrified to be in the hot streets of New York City and see uh, the teeming masses of the world, of which I am one. It's easy to forget when you're in the media that you're really one of the masses, you know that. We all think we're somehow in a separate world. But when you walk down into the sweaty streets and your shirt sticks to your skin and you get jostled on the streets, you realize we're all one and the same. We're all brothers under the skin. And that's why we're talking about an issue so important as a nation. Either a nation exists or it doesn't exist. Either we are a nation defined by a border, by a common language, and by a common culture, or we cease to be a nation. And as you well know, there has been a movement to erase our nationhood. It didn't start with Obama, but it's liable to end with Obama. And that's why this is such a critical issue. You know, if you've listened to my show, that I defined America as a nation defined by borders, language, and culture. But not just America. Can you name one nation on earth? Name one that is not defined by its borders, its language, and its culture. Say Finland. Finland has borders. Finland has a, a national language called Finnish. And it has a common culture. The founding fathers, the flag, the history, the wars they fought. That's culture. That's who we are. And now you have a crazy man in the White House, a lunatic, an enemy worse than the Soviet Union was in terms of the actual damage he's doing. Oh, he's on vacation right now in Martha's Vineyard with the billionaires and millionaires that he reviles every day. Isn't it wonderful? He reviles the rich and parties with the richer. Isn't that funny? I don't see him getting down with the homeless in lower Manhattan. But we know what politician means. It means double-talking phony. That's an old story. But rarely have we had a double-talking phony who also put a knife, a knife to the neck of Lady Liberty. And that's what this battle is about for 2016. Will someone please stand up and defend Lady Liberty? Or are we going to have the same group of internationalists stepping on her heart and choking the windpipe? I don't know. And that's why we're talking about anchor babies. Whether you are for open borders or for a controlled immigration is the question. How can anyone listening to this program who looks around the streets of America and recognizes that about 98 million adults are not working. How can you honestly look in the mirror and say, yes, open the borders to all of the world? What country will be left? Where will the money come from for all of the social services that they have gotten used to and they hear about in their third world hell holes? They come to this country which you left-wingers hate? Why are they running here? Because it's such a hateful country? What are they coming from the garbage cans of the world for? Because it's such a hateful, racist nation? You idiots, you? They're coming here because it's a land of opportunity for those who want to work and a golden trumpet for those who don't want to work. They can sit around and collect welfare, uh, food stamps, free legal, free medical, you name it. I was a, a social worker in Manhattan, by the way. Let me remind you about that one day. Maybe you ought to tell that story on the Savage Nation. I was a young, idealistic, left-wing kid who came out of college. I didn't know any better. I took a job as a New York social worker. Did you know that? Yeah, I'm the only one in the media, in the American media, make a note of it, 
who is, number one, the son of an immigrant, and number two, I, I actually was a social worker, meaning a welfare worker. I worked for the New York Department of Welfare. That's what it was called in those days. They changed it from Department of Welfare to something like social services. Oh, we owe them a living. Social services. Yes, sir. How can I serve you? No, we call it Department of Welfare. What I experienced as a young idealistic graduate of Queens College the welfare recipients were living better than I was as a college graduate and a native-born American citizen. Wake up before you wind up in no country. Of course, the number one story is Hillary Clinton. Did she wipe or not wipe? That is the question. Wait until you hear her weasel out of the question by Ed Henry of Fox News. It's an embarrassment. What she did would put anyone else in jail for violating the Espionage Act, and it gets better. Bill O'Reilly came out of the closet. We see him for what he is, a left-wing demagogue doing the bidding of his bosses at Fox News who are 100% in on amnesty for millions upon millions of illegals and all those who want to come in. And only Donald Trump can stop this insanity, the population overgrowth, maternity tourism, birthright citizenship. There's only one man speaking out against it. That's Donald Trump. Thank God I've been writing about it since 1994, but thank God that someone reads my books. Now, I can't say that uh, Donald Trump's reading my books, but I can't say he never read my books. After all, I'm not an unknown personality. Nevertheless, the issue is, can we afford to take in all the poor of the earth? Of course we can. So let's begin with Donald Trump debating Bill O'Reilly, the man who came out of the closet as the left-wing demagogue he has always been. Listen now on the Savage Nation. I think you're wrong about the 14th Amendment and frankly the whole thing with anchor babies and the concept of anchor babies I don't think you're right about that. I, I think can it's quote it. You want me to quote you the amendment? If you're born here, you're an American. Period. Period. But there are many lawyers, many lawyers are saying that's not the way it is in terms of this. What happens is they're in Mexico, they're going to have a baby, they uh, move over here for that. a couple of days, they have the baby. No, but Bill, they're saying it's not going to hold up in court. Now it's going to have to be tested, but they say it's not going to hold up in court. Regardless, when people are illegally in the country, they have to go. Now the good ones, and there are plenty of good ones, will work it so it's expedited. We can expedite it where they come back in, but they come back legally. Bill, we have a country. You need borders and you need I, law. Uh, I we said that no for law. decades. I've All been right. saying that. So O'Reilly has not said it for decades. Turn it off. Turn it off. No, he's trying to play it both ways. O'Reilly is a longtime left-wing operative who pretended to be a conservative. Now when the real issues come down, the rubber meets the road, so to speak, take a guess which side O'Reilly is on. He's on the side of Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, and the New World Order uh, a crowd. Let me explain something to you. I know the 14th Amendment intimately. I have it in my hand. The unconstitutionality of citizenship by birth to non-Americans is a fact of life. Let me read it to you. And I'm reading it to you from the gentleman, Senator Howard of Michigan, who actually wrote the amendment in the Senate in 1866. Mr. O'Reilly, did you know it was written in 1866, right after the Civil War? And do you know why the 14th Amendment was written? To make sure that the freed slaves were accepted as American citizens. It was never intended to admit the world nor was it intended to permit birthright citizenship nor birth tourism. I'll read it to you. This amendment, Mr. O'Reilly, this amendment, which I have offered, is simply declaratory of what I regard as the law of the land already, that every person born within the limits of the United States and subject to their jurisdiction is by virtue of natural law and national law a citizen of the United States. you got to read the whole thing, not a piece of it, because this is in the amendment. Quote, this is by the guy who wrote the amendment. This will not, of course, include persons born in the United States who are foreigners, aliens who belong to the families of ambassadors, or foreigners, aliens who belong to the families of ambassadors, or foreign ministers accredited by the, to the government of the United States, but will include every other class of persons. This, and he's writing now, I'm not repeating something in my own head. Here's the man who wrote it. He said, it settles the great question.
of citizenship and removes all doubt as to what persons are or are not the citizens of the United States, close quote. So it's clear that the framers of the 14th Amendment had absolutely no intention of freely giving away American citizenship to just anyone simply because they may have been born on American soil, something our courts have wrongfully assumed. But there is one sentence and one clause that does need discussion. As Mr. Trump said, it'll have to be determined in the courts. What exactly did, quote, subject to the jurisdiction thereof, that's the quote, mean to the framers of the 14th Amendment. We'll have an answer for that as well in the Savage Nation. Senator Lyman Trumbull, chairman of the Judiciary Committee, author of the 13th Amendment, and the man who inserted this phrase said this, quote, the provision is that all persons born in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens. That means subject to the complete jurisdiction thereof. What do we mean by complete jurisdiction thereof? Not owing allegiance to anybody else, that is what it means. In plain English, only children born to American citizens can be considered citizens of the United States, since only an American citizen could enjoy the extent and quality of jurisdiction of an American citizen now. That settles the case, and I'll tell you something else. You want to hear what, the, what established law is? That's established law. It was never intended to permit the world to dump their babies on our shores and turn them into instant citizens who can then bring in the mother, the father, the aunt, the uncle, the cousins, and the grandparents. It is either a nation of borders, language, and culture, or it's nothing. It ceases to exist. I understand the immigrant experience quite well. In fact, I had a grandmother living in my house uh, when I was a child who didn't speak English. She spoke in Russian. And the fact of the matter is, I know what it's like to live with a grandmother who does not speak the language of the land. Now, my father said to me, only speak English because otherwise you'll become nothing in America. And that is a fact of reality. And yet we have millions of people who come here and don't even want to bother learning to speak English. What do you think they're going to be like five or ten years from now? Now, having said that, again, i got to go back to the city I'm in right now. And normally I do my show out of San Francisco. So I come here and I look around. I see a city with every race, every language you can imagine in the streets. And I want to tell you who the big loser is going to be from an America that is changing so rapidly because of Obama's desire to change it so rapidly and I have to say it in all candidness America's black population especially the poor are the ones who are going to lose out the most I look around and I see people on the bottom end of society who are working tell me who is going to take their jobs but immigrants who are willing to work for less and put up with less than the best treatment and that is why this swamp of illegal aliens is so dangerous I don't think it's going to affect the rich very much, except to make them richer. That's why guys like uh, Microsoft or whoever, Facebook, Zuckerberg, they love the masses because amongst the masses, they get cheaper labor to run their IT companies. They don't care what it does to the poor because they're not poor. They never see them. They're on their yachts. Spielberg is going to sell his, what, $170 million yacht I read the other day to buy a $250 million yacht. God bless him. He didn't steal it from me. He earned it. He likes the yacht. God, if he finds that entertaining, good luck to him. The fact is, he's not going to feel the effects of this. And so the poor of America are the ones who are going to feel it very, very deeply. They're going to be pushed aside. Why don't I just take requests now that I'm in New York? Can we do anything else but talk about the election and Donald Trump? Can I talk about the coming civil war, which already came, but it didn't leave yet? Can I talk about the fact that Government Zero, which was number 149,000 last week on Amazon, is now, I swear to God, it was like number four in politics, and the book isn't published for another two months? Because it's the last book you're ever going to have to buy on politics. It's everything you ever knew about the liberal world and then some. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Executive order gets uh, rescinded. One good thing about rescind, one good thing you'll about, rescind the dreamatic executive you're order. You have to. We have to make a whole new set of standards. And when people come in, they have so to you're come in. You're going to split up families. Chuck, you're going to deport children. Chuck, no, no. We're going to keep the families together. We have to keep you the do. families together. But you're going to keep them together. To but they have to go. What if they have no place to go? We will work with them. They have to go. Chuck, and we either have a country or we don't have a country. All right, so there's the Lilliputian, Chuck Todd, who grew a beard to look intelligent, trying to take on a giant, Donald Trump. But Donald Trump said on this issue, which I agree with, that the anchor baby law has to go. I don't see how anyone could argue with that if they're rational. He didn't say throw them out of the country. He said something has to be done. He's the only one at least raising the issue. 
And you see, America is a state of mind. I've known this since I'm 18 years old. America is a state of mind. If people believe that things are going to be better, that unto itself changes things for the better. And we've had politicians like Obama who's run us down. He's made America a bad place. He's made America evil. He's made America wrong. He's apologized for things that Americans didn't even do. And that's made people ashamed to be Americans. And it destroys the morale of a nation. Do you understand what I'm talking about, morale? You ask anybody, whether it's a sports team or the military, it's all based on the morale of that team. And Obama is the worst thing I've ever seen for America's morale. He's destroyed it. Obama has destroyed America's confidence. Trump is going to give Americans confidence again. He's going to bring confidence back to America. That alone will make us a better country. Now, the, the minutiae of the, uh, the, the positions and the policies, do we really know what he's going to do? Do we really know if he can do it? I don't know. I really don't know. I know most politicians promise the world and deliver some of it. That I know. I'm a realist. But if a guy can make you feel good about a country and make the country feel good about itself, and he can tell foreigners who don't like us to go you know where, that unto itself is worth a lot to me. And I think it's worth a lot to you. But many of you are not sold, and I'm not here to sell you on them. It's that simple. On the other side of the aisle is an overt, low-life, street socialist, communist, a terrible loser, professional agitator like Bernie Sanders, a guy who doesn't even believe he's getting this kind of attention. A left-wing fanatic that if you ever saw him, you'd say, who is that man? Call the police. He looks like a vagrant. Now, all of a sudden, he was like the college professor that you had who for three hours harangued you about America and then made you feel guilty about white privilege. That's Bernie Sanders. It's unbelievable to me. A communist from his dirty toenails to his, to his dandruff. His dandruff flakes are socialistic. That's how bad this guy is. Now, listen, if you have a choice between a socialist communist like Bernie Sanders and a capitalist like Donald Trump, and that's the general election, it's an 85-15, maybe a 90-10, period. So let's listen to uh, 06. Here is Socialism 101 in clip 6 from Bernie Sanders. If we are going to transform America... Here we go if again. If we are going to have a government that represents working families uh, and not working large family. campaign donors, Lord, we need Lord. a political revolution in this country. You've been trying to have a revolution since you, since you were born in Brooklyn, a revolution. Another one, a soapbox revolutionary, Bernie Sanders. Again, if we're going to transform America. Hey, Bernie, we should transform America by making sure that low lowlifes like you can never get where you want to go. Now listen to Seven. As he makes believe he's going to attack the rich, Bernie Sanders, commie in Seven. We need millions of people to stand up and make it clear to oh. the billionaire class they oh, cannot please. have it all. Oh, come on. They are going to start paying their fair share of taxes. Oh, yeah, okay. Now, listen to his voice. He sounds like Woody Allen on Laughing Gas. If Woody Allen came out of a dental office and he was jacked up on Laughing Gas, he'd sound like Bernie Sanders. We need millions of people to stand up and make it clear to the billionaire class they cannot have it all. They're going to start paying their fair share of taxes. Now, does that inspire you? Is that a man who you would follow into a, a hail of machine gun bullets? I don't think so. This guy is an embarrassment. So, all right, give me a break here. I mean, is that what you want to represent America against China and Putin? That's who you see standing up to Putin? Savage. What, like with a cloth or something? No. Well, no. I don't. I know you want to make a point, and I can just repeat what I have said. In order to, in order to be as cooperative as possible, we have turned over the server. They can do whatever they want to with the server to figure out what's there, what's not there. That's for the you know people investigating it to try to figure out. But we turned over everything that was work-related, every single thing. Personal stuff, we did not. I had no obligation to do so and did not. All right, thank All right, you. That's enough thank already. You. We already had eight years of Hillary Clinton. Well, like with the Cleoth? Like with the Cleoth? Who does she think she is talking to? Are the American people that stupid that they don't know who the Clintons are? We didn't have eight years of one crime after another committed on the American landscape. Well, here she is. She wiped the server. Now, you know, there's an interesting question here. It is her own 
inspector general's department in the State Department that's pursuing this. It means that the dam has broken between Hillary Clinton and her absolutely fanatical control over everyone. The inspector general of the State Department is saying, hey, there's a problem here. And we want to find out what was on those. What was on there? What was she hiding? Does anyone listening to this show think that this is a minor story? Do you actually buy the Democrat line that this is nothing? Do you want to live in a country where, let's say the Republicans win the next election, do you want someone in the federal government to have 60,000 emails that disappear and not know what was on them? Is that the kind of country you think you want to live in? Yeah, of course you're going to answer, it's not a big deal, it's only Republicans doing it, because you are prejudiced. Do you know what prejudice means? You know where the word prejudice comes from? To prejudge. And you've prejudged that anyone who attacks Hillary Clinton, even if she committed a crime, is not a good person. No, my friends, where there's smoke, there's fire. There were secure messages on that computer, or the device she was using, and she sent them to somebody. What were on the, What were the messages? What was on it? We know that there were satellite images. Do you know what that means? The most top secret images that the government has are Defense Department, Department satellite images. Think about this. The Defense Department has high-flying satellites. They can photograph a cigarette pack on someone walking around, around the globe. Those images were sent to Hillary Clinton for some reason, and she sent them to someone for some reason. If you live in a democracy, we have a right to know what did she receive, when did she receive it, who did she send it to, and what did they do with that message, and what was it all about? Don't you think you want to know? We'll find out sure enough because they've already pulled in Anthony Weiner's wife, Huma Abedin. She's now being grilled. She's being grilled like a salmon over hot coals. One of them is going to break. One of these roasted smelts being slow cooked over hot fire is going to crack because if they don't, they'll go to jail for 25 years for God knows what, perjury, espionage, God knows what they can get on. You know that there are people right now in prison for having done less? The other issue is Trump standing up for America's immigration laws and O'Reilly really coming out nakedly as the left-wing demagogue actor he has always been. It's a shock to me. That Fox News, which frankly is all we have left, has moved so far to the left, especially on immigration. There are some very good people at Fox News, but there are some not very good people at Fox News, and O'Reilly happens to be one of them. I have called O'Reilly the leprechaun for many years, which is why I've been banned from Fox News. He's their big star. At least he was until Martha Washington came along. And now, of course, the leprechaun has been trumped by Martha Washington, but now he's trumped himself. He attacks Trump on an issue that is clearly a dividing line between conservative and liberal. Did you hear that interchange? Again, let me just repeat. Let's just calm down. Every nation on the earth is defined by borders, language, and culture. That is how Michael Savage, in 1994, when I formed the Paul Revere Society, I was asked to define what is a nation. How do you define a nation? You know that no one had clearly defined a nation until I did? And I said, well, I think it's borders, language, and culture. Let me tell you something. If anyone has defined a nation better than that, let me know who it is. A nation is defined by its borders, language, and culture. I defined it in 1994. My next book, my last book, my biggest book, my blockbuster, the only book you'll ever need on the subject of government in your lifetime is Government Zero. It's not even for sale except on Amazon. But listen to the subtitle. No borders, no language, no culture. From best-selling author of Stop the Coming Civil War, Michael Savage reveals the massive dangers currently leading to the demise of our nation. Oh, you think you've heard it all before? Savage sounds the alarm about how progressives and radical Islamists are working together towards similar goals to destroy Western civilization and remake it in their own respective images. These two dark forces are transforming our once free republic into a socialist third world dictatorship ruled by government zero, absolute government and zero representation. Combining in-depth analysis and biting commentary, Michael Savage cuts through mainstream media propaganda to reveal an all-out attack on our borders, language, and culture 
by progressive and Islamist travelers who have hijacked public policy from national defense to immigration to public education. There is only one thing that can stop this terrifying agenda. Michael Savage has a plan. Get the inside story before it's too late. I actually have chills up my spine as I read a definition of my own last nonfiction book. Government Zero on Amazon now. It won't be out until October. But let me tell you something. People are really wanting to read that book. And I want to tell you something else. I've been doing this for 21 years. I'm not going to be doing it forever. And I want this book, Government Zero, to be my swan song. I want to say bye-bye, and I want to disappear from the airwaves and from the written word in a couple of years. That's going to be the end of it. I'm not going to do this forever. And I want you to understand that you've got to carry the ball for me. You've got to pick it up, and you've got to carry the baton. And by the way, you don't know this. There's a law on the books right now which says that any Cuban who reaches dry land in the U.S. is granted immediate asylum. It's been that way for 50 years. Has that been rescinded by the great President Obama? In other words, that was set up 50 years ago so that people who uh, wanted freedom could try to get to America and they'd be granted asylum. It made sense then because not many people were able to get out of the prison camp called Cuba. But if that law is not rescinded, it means that any Cuban now who comes to America, and it could be millions of them, will be granted asylum. So is it possible that Obama is doing this for yet more voters in Florida and Texas and Louisiana in order to permanently transform those states into, well, you know what, you see how this works. Okay, my friends, that's what's going on. It's always something you don't see that matters, and we are on the Savage Nation today talking, of course, about the big story, which is the normalization of relations with Cuba, which has uh, been a while now, and the hoisting of the U.S. flag at the embassy in Cuba for the first time in 54 years. What's surprising is the flag, the U.S. flag was raised over the newly reopened American embassy, and it was not the rainbow flag. Because I think the rainbow flag more represents, more typically represents this administration than the stars and stripes. I would think that the stars and stripes, which are kind of antiquated, I mean, when you think about it, stands for militarism, nationalism, patriotism. It's everything that Obama finds repugnant. While the rainbow flag represents everything sensitive and kind in the world. Anyway, just a random thought. Well, here's a little news for those of you who are ISIS sympathizers. ISIS leader Abu Bakr al baghdadi sexually abused American hostage Kyla Mueller and then killed her. There's your kinder and gentler Islamist at work. Before her death earlier this year, American hostage Kyla Mueller was repeatedly raped by the top leader of ISIS, Abu Bakr al baghdadi according to counterterrorism officials. I don't know whether it's halal to rape a woman, but then again, they do it on a regular basis to eight-year-old Azidi and Christian girls that they capture. I guess they find uh, the right to do it somewhere in their holy book. But then again, they're not Muslims. You understand they've hijacked uh, the religion of Islam. They're not really Islamic, although it's called the Islamic State. Don't be confused by them. It's not really the Islamic State, even though it's called ICE, IS now. ICE is a something else. Immigration and uh, c c customs enforcement. Ha, ha, ha. That's a joke. But ICE, they've, they've shortened it from ISIS to ICE to make it easier for you to remember. I stands for Islamic and S stands for state. But according to our government, I does not stand for Islamic. We don't know what it stands for. Perhaps it's sort of like an iPhone. It's like iPhone. Does I stand for Islam? No. I don't know what I stands for, but it's called an iPhone. So according to Obama, the Islamic State is not really the Islamic State. It's an I state. So ICE could stand for I state, meaning it's now their own. It's, it's a state of mind. It's not an Islamic state. It's a state of mind. Uh, they didn't even hijack Islam because it just stands for themselves. See, I mean, that, that's the way to look. You're not looking at things properly. Anyway, she was the property of the leader of ISIS. He raped her repeatedly, and then he killed her. That's all. Nice folks. Oh, here we go. The Marxist Pope brands rejection of illegal aliens an act of war. Now, remember, he was a, this Argentinian was a bouncer in his youth. Isn't it interesting how he went from being a bouncer to a holy man? Now he's trying to stir up a communist revolution around the world. Your Pope, 
brands rejection of illegal aliens an act of war. Really? What is he trying to to do, him and Soros? I, I would think that Soros will soon be invited to the Vatican. He might even be given communion. Soros might be invited to the Vatican and be given a, an audience with the holy man. They're speaking uh, from the same page. In his speech on the island of Lampedusa in southern Italy, the Marxist Pope called on Euro powers to do more to help the illegal immigrants that have been arriving on the island. Now, they're mainly um, Middle Easterners fleeing civil war. Syrian refugees from Kobani now flooding into Italy. Just what Italy needed is Syrian refugees and African refugees. That's just what Italy needed because they have full employment in Italy. The streets are in good repair. The trains run on time. And uh, that's what's going on. The British government has also been criticized for its handling of the illegal alien crisis in Calais. Because the illegals are now jumping on trains and threatening truck drivers traveling through the Euro tunnel, saying, take us to your country or else we'll kill you. Africans are seen running on the shuttle tracks after they succeeded to jump over the fences and avoid the French patrols on the outskirts of Calais. Yeah, he's right, actually, in a certain way, but he has it backwards. The Pope says that if you reject the illegal aliens as an act of war, I would say the illegal aliens are committing an act of war against the first world. And if we had a legitimate, if we had legitimate central governments in Western nations, they would be turned back at the borders. End of story. He says, this is war, this is violence, it's called murder. That's your pope. That's your pope coming to agitate like a community organizer instead of a pope uh, in a very short period of time here in America. Unbelievable to me. That's your pope. Smiling, nice old man, isn't he? Isn't that cute how he smiles, little hat on, nice little rim glasses? He looks so angelic, doesn't he? The former bouncer. I look at one of the mullers from Iran who calls death to America, death to the Jews, kick the Jews in, out of the nation, kick them out of Israel, kick them out of the Middle East. And I look at him, he looks like a simple, nice old religious man with white hair, which you know, doesn't look like a tough guy, but it just shows you how looks can be deceiving. You always thought that when fascism returned, it would be behind a militancy, a visual, a verbal visual militancy. No, <laughs> it doesn't always work that way. They got very smart. The communists got very smart. Well, here's an answer, Mr. Pope. I think all of the uh, asylees that are flooding into Italy should be rounded up by the Italian police and brought to the Vatican, into the Vatican City. And then they should name it a nation. And Vatican City can become a new nation filled with Syrians and Africans. That's what I think. As I've said before, and I put my money where my mouth is. The church could sell their treasure troves of gold, artwork, property, stop drinking the Dom, stop eating caviar behind the curtains, and give up the hypocrisy. And I believe that then people might believe a word that this bouncer disguised as a pope uh, has to say. And I'm going to make an offer right now on this radio show. I'm willing to offer $1 million for the Sistine Chapel ceiling if the Vatican will accept it and guarantee to give the money uh, to the poor, directly to the poor, no, in, no, no middlemen, by creating a uh, sanctuary city in the Vatican. I think the Vatican City should become a sanctuary city. I think they should let anyone go in there and then they should care for them. And I'm willing to make that offer right now to help it. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Now let's get back to the issues of the day. Trump is right. O'Reilly is a left-wing demagogue. 100% for amnesty, as is his boss, Murdoch. I happen to know from the inside... It leaks. Murdoch is a one-worlder. Murdoch is a new world order. The Fox News people have been told, these are your marching orders, you're for amnesty, and you hate Trump. You turn on Fox News, every minute it's an attack on Trump. They become like CNN and MSNBC, where it's like a joke. 
Here, I'll pick up the New York Times. Front page of today's New York Times. Little story. Trump paints GOP in corner on immigration. I don't think he's painted him in a corner. I think he's defined the issue of the day. He hasn't painted anyone in a corner. It's the other cowards who are in a corner, not him. He's clearly out there. You want to tell you something else about Trump that you don't know, that I have defined? I said it to somebody on the visit here. I don't know who. I said Trump is surprising. He doesn't get angry. They push him pretty hard. They press his buttons. O'Reilly tried to paint them into being a demagogue monster who wanted to deport little poor foreign children. He didn't freak. He didn't get angry. I'll say it again. Donald Trump is very Reagan-esque. I said it first. He's sort of the Ronald Reagan of our time. He's affable. He's likable. He doesn't get hateful. He says it like it is without getting mad. I couldn't do it. That's why I'm not in politics. That's why I'm on the radio. I blow up too easily. I'd make a terrible politician. Now I want to tell you something else about anchor babies. I told it to you yesterday, but it is worth repeating today. Canada, beautiful nation, wonderful people. They were being flooded by Chinese who were coming in in the ninth month of pregnancy, delivering the baby in Canada who became instant citizens. Then mommy became a citizen. Daddy was born in from China, the grandparents. Canada got freaked out. And take a guess who stopped the anchor baby law in Canada. It was a Chinese Canadian who said we cannot afford to have all of China deliver their babies here. Savage.